out to the phone lines we will go. Luke Johnson covers the Saints for the Advocate. He joins us now. Luke, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm doing pretty great, man. I got another LSU Tiger down here in New Orleans. How about that? <laughs> That's a good thing, and he's a good one. Big name, Tyron Matthew, headed down to New Orleans to be a member of the Black and Gold. Uh, obviously, this has been rumored for some time. Uh, is it your understanding that the Saints were aware that they were going to get this done before the draft ever started? Uh, I don't know about that. I, I think they were they were pretty confident, but I, I don't know if it was a sure thing. And and maybe um, you know if if a situation really presented itself that they would have really liked, um, you know, maybe they would have pulled the trigger on a draft pick and not made this signing. Um, but you know, I think they they understood going into the draft that there was a very good very good chance they could shore up the safety position in free agency. Um, and once the draft kind of shaped out the way it did, it made things pretty easy on their end. Marcus Williams out, Marcus May in, Malcolm Jenkins out, Tyron Matthew in. How does this safety room compare to the one from last year? Well, um, I don't think it has as much range, right? Um, I think Marcus Williams is probably one of the better safeties in the NFL just in terms of being like kind of that, that deep ball center fielder type. Um, I don't think Marcus May gives them the same uh, amount of juice in that way. Um, even though he's he's a very good coverage defender, I just don't think he can cover as much ground. Um, but I do think they have a little bit more playmaking ability there. Um, you know, Tyron, obviously, I mean that's that's what he's known for, right? Uh, you know, the guy's made a ton of interceptions in his career. This, this is exactly what everybody knows about him: is that he he has just like a nose for the ball. He's a, a playmaking player, so I think that's a that's a huge thing for this defense. You know, that's. It's kind of one of the areas where, you know, as this defense has gotten a lot better, um, yeah, I, I don't think they've they've been this huge playmaking defense and you know forcing a lot of turnovers. Um, I, I think Tyron gives them some of that, and uh, uh, so it, it's a little bit of a give and take, I think, with the the trade off at safety. Well, obviously, the Saints given up a lot of draft compensation to move up and obviously get another first round pick. Um, do you think they're going to regret that down the road, or do you think that's something they're kind of just pushing the chips to the middle of the table right now and, and trying to win? Well, I think there's two ways to look at it. Uh, I think the Saints uh, believe they're going to be very good, and um, and therefore I don't think they think they're going to regret it. Um, but I, I think there's so much that, that's just uncertain about this team. You, you're taking out a, a Hall of Fame play caller you're in your second year without a hall of fame quarterback um you don't know how dennis allen's going to operate in his first year it's it's a big risk it's a big risk but if, if they are as good as they think they are um then it's not really that big a deal you're giving up a, a, a first round pick in the back end of the first round that turns into you know what ended up being that the 11th pick in this year's draft um and, and you're using that ammunition to get a guy who's going to help you right away. Um, you know, the receiver group it was just atrocious these last couple of years while Mike Thomas has been hurt. Um, and it, you know, it was clearly an area of weakness on their team. And they got a guy who they believe you know, might be the best receiver in this class. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's not something they're going to regret if they're as good as they think they're going to be. But I, you know, it is, in my opinion, a, a risk because you know, they, they could – very well win six games next year and be looking at, you know, giving up a, a top 15 pick and that's going to hurt. The Saints have drafted offensive linemen and kind of moved them around over the last handful of years with Pete kind of playing outside and inside. You were shuffling uh, your two with Reese and McCoy from guard to center and trying to figure that out. With Penning, do you think he is the plug and play left tackle? Is he in a competition with Hurst? Is he a swing guy? Is Ramchick potentially moving? How does that, how does that work? So they view Penning as a left tackle. Um, I, I don't think they're they're planning on moving him around. Um, I do think he'll have to compete with James Hurst and win the job. Um, but you know, the, the fact of the matter is that you know Sean Payton said it a couple of years ago with Cesar Ruiz. You, you don't draft a guy in the first round to sit on your bench. Uh, yeah, they, they drafted him with every idea that he would be their starting left tackle, and uh, you know I, I think that frees up Hurst to play what is, I think, a much more valuable role for him than, than a starting left tackle. Uh, he started games at four different positions last year. Uh, he can play inside, outside, both sides of the, the tackle. So I, I just think that um, that area for him is just much more valuable than him being a, 
a average NFL starting left tackle. And if Penning hits, and I think they think he's going to hit, um, he has all the traits they really like, and they can get him in there with Doug Marone, who's a very good offensive line coach, and clean up some of the technique stuff. Um, yeah, I think they think their their offensive line is going to be better. We know that Ohio State has been very friendly to the New Orleans Saints over the last uh, last decade, and now there's starting to be a little bit of a Tennessee Vols pipeline between Camara and we've seen about three other big time players in Shy Tuttle being one of them. Come in, Alante Taylor in in the second round. What do you know about him? Where does he fit in? Yeah, Mark West Callaway too. Yep. Um, yeah, they got some pretty good players out of there. Um, I, I think Alante Taylor. Um, yeah, he was a surprise to me. I, I, I figured they would draft. Um, a, a defensive back because it's it's kind of what they do. They they often draft to positions of strength, but yeah, I, I kind of assumed it would be a safety. And when they picked him, you know, I, was, I was reading up on him, and a lot of people were were thinking that he would be uh, better suited to play safety in the NFL. And when we asked uh, Dennis Allen about him, he, he said they they think he's a corner. Um, so I, I was a little surprised by that, but I do think that. He uh, gives them a lot of uh, stuff they like at that position. He's competitive, uh, which I think if you look at every single one of those guys, that, that is like a high-level trait for them. Um, yeah, Marshawn Lattimore uh, jawing with Mike Evans is exactly what I'm talking about there. Like um, They're always getting after it, and uh, and he can fly, um, and he's a big body. You know, he's six foot and almost 200 pounds. Um, so, yeah, I, I think – they just see all these traits and they're like, okay, we may not need a quarterback or a cornerback right now, but you know, who's to say Paulson Adebo is not going to take a step back after teams have a full year of film on them. Um, you know, who's, who's to say Marshawn Lattimore's hamstring isn't going to flare up anything in six games. Um, you know, you just never really know every, every a, a position of strength can very quickly turn into something that's not, uh, as I think we saw last year with the offensive line. So you, you draft guys with uh, with the, the traits that fit what you're looking for. Um, they really, really liked Alante Taylor's traits. Even, you know, even if they liked them more than other teams and more than draft prognos- prognosticators, um, yeah, I don't think that really matters. If, if he's your guy, um, you go get him when you can. Uh, do you know um, how this Tyron Matthew uh, contract is going to affect the Saints cap? And then after that, um, do you think they're going to stand pat as far as free agency goes up until the season? Or do you think they're going to try to make a few more moves here? So I, I think I'd be uh, I'd be like guessing if I tried to put a number on the Teron Matthew thing. Um, I, I, I think uh, it, it's probably going to be in the like, like a short term deal, um, one or two years, and, and you're looking at I imagine somewhere in the eight to ten million dollar a year range. Um, something that'll allow Tyron to show that he can still play this year. Um, yeah, I think he had like a little bit of a dip in his play last year, and, and that probably scared some teams off, especially since he's about to be 30 years old. Um, give him an opportunity to show he can still play. Give the Saints an opportunity to get a very good player at a at a, a discount price, essentially, um, and you know let let Tyron reestablish his market either next year or the year after. Um, and I, I think that'll leave room for them to play around a little bit more. And you know maybe uh, you know I don't I don't think them drafting Chris Olave closes the door on them with Jarvis Landry. You know, I think they're still in the, in the, the mix for that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think there's, there's still other positions here they can address um, via free agency because they still have, um, yeah, I think before the draft, they had $21 million in cap space. It's uh, second or third most in the NFL. Um, so they, they still got moves they can make. Yeah, I was curious to see if they were going to fill a need at a defensive tackle. I thought that Jordan Davis would have been a great fit in the first round if that was going to work out pre-draft. But they go ahead and draft, draft Jordan Jackson from Air Force in the sixth round with Onyemata and, and Tuttle in the last year of their deals. Um, is this a, a guy that they think can potentially work his way towards uh, being a starter? I don't know. I, you know, I think he's, he's probably a developmental guy at this point. Um, you know, he played at, at Air Force, which you know is, is not like a, you know, a place that really produces a lot of high-level NFL talent. I think he's going to have to come in and and kind of uh, learn the pro game a little bit before they can really count on him. I mean, you never know. I may be completely wrong here, but um, yeah, I think that's how they're viewing him. Uh, and you know, like you, I was kind of surprised they didn't address it until you know the sixth round, um, because not only are these guys heading into the final years of their contract, they were, they were not good last year. 
uh, David Onyemata had like the, the least productive year of his career, uh, you know, beyond missing the games. He just was kind of absent when he was on the field. Um, and then Shy Tuttle and Malcolm Roach and um, Josiah Bronson and all these other guys who pretty much everybody is a undrafted free agent. Uh, Christian Ringo. Um, these guys combined for zero sacks and zero tackles for loss. Uh, they need to be better there. I, I, I think that's that's why my colleague Jeff Duncan reported that you know defensive line coach Ryan Nielsen was pounding the table saying draft Jordan Davis, draft Jordan Davis. Um, they ended up going to take Chris Olave instead uh, with their their first first round pick. But I, I don't think it's an area they're entirely comfortable with, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that um, you know if there's like a like a veteran release on cut down day to, to see the Saints kind of bring some guys in and, and try to get a little bit more um, talent in that spot. I'll uh, just kind of be a little presumptive here, but I'm hearing you say that uh, maybe not as rangy at the safety spot and not as productive at the defensive tackle spot. Are you a little bit lower on this Saints D than maybe we may be over here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're going to take a step back this year defensively. Um, I, you know, I, it, Cam Jordan had a really, really, really strong close to the year, but um, you know, I, I think he's he's still shown signs of aging these last couple of years. It's just something you you worry a little bit about. Uh, Demario Davis had some off games last year. He's I think 33. Um, yeah, they, some of these really, really important players are you know, maybe getting close to the back end of their career here. Um, and then you, you you subtract guys like Malcolm Jenkins and and Marcus Williams and. Um, you look at some of the the guys who have not produced the way you expect them to, like David Onyemata, and yeah, I, I think they, they could take a step back. Um, I don't think they're going to be bad, um, but I, I don't think they're going to be out there, you know, winning games on the strength of their defense week in week out, kind of like the last year before everybody got hurt on offense. He is Luke Johnson, covers the New Orleans Saints for the Advocate down in New Orleans. Luke, we appreciate you jumping on. My pleasure, guys. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.